Hey everyone, it's a great day in sports analytics. I'm Victor Holman, sports analytics expert, and welcome to the sports analytics three minute drill, where I break down sports analytic methods and explain how they're being used today in the world of sports. Today, I'm gonna to discuss a simple concept, one of the more simpler approaches, but still yet a powerful one, and that's measuring mean and median in sports data. So let's begin. Mean and median are two of the most useful methods used to summarize numerical data. The mean of a set of data is simply the average, which is found by adding the total of all the observations and dividing by the number of observations. The mean is used to describe the average number of goals a team scores in a game or the average number of saves a goaltender has per game. Traditional sports statistics rely heavily on the mean. The median is found by putting the data numbers in order and then finding the middle value. Half of the data values are above the median and the other half of the data values are below the median. The mean and median are both useful in different situations. Deciding which to use involves determining the purpose of the analysis and the type of outcomes required. When a distribution is normal, in other words, resembles a bell curve, the mean and median will be very close together in the center of the data. When the distribution leans heavily to the left or to the right, the mean and median can be very different numbers. It is important then to determine which is more accurate for the purposes as they can be misleading otherwise. The mean number of goals a team scores per game could be four, while the median is only two. Looking at the mean number gives inflated values for a team scoring ability. This discrepancy happens because outliers affect the mean more heavily than the median. Outliers are the outcomes that occur very rarely, such as a 10-point game. The one 10-point game distorts the mean of the data, but not the median. The median is only used with quantitative data, or data involving numbers, while the median can be used for qualitative data as well. Data can be assigned a value, for example, a win is assigned the value of 2, a tie the value of 1, and the loss the value of 0. Finding the median for this information is possible, however the mean would not apply. The mean and median have been used prodigiously in sports statistics throughout the years. They provide statistics that are straightforward so an analyst can easily discuss them with the fans and coaches can easily discuss them with the players. They are very basic tools, but at the same time, very helpful. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you found it informative. If you'd like to learn about a groundbreaking approach for leveraging analytics to get players to execute team strategy, check out my Agile Sports Analytics framework, software, and mobile app. If you'd like to know how your team or sports organization can leverage analytics across the seven key maturity areas and 26 best practices, check out my sports analytics maturity model and take the free comprehensive sports analytics maturity assessment. To learn more about this and 150 different sports analytic methods, purchase my book, Sports Analytics from A to Z, available on Amazon. And if you need help developing analytic models that create a competitive edge, contact me for a free consultation at www.agilesportsanalytics.com or call me at 888-861-8733.